Great, thanks very much, Jason. How are you? Very good, very good. So, Georgia, how's the Irish Rovers doing now? You guys got a new album coming out soon? Yes, we have. We've been working like fiends for the last 18 months or so. We started, um, we did a, a new DVD in Ireland called Home in Ireland, so that took a bit of time to do that. And uh, then PBS uh, bought it from us, and then we did another one in Banff for um, Christmas, and it's going to be next Christmas, and also PBS. So we filmed that just before the Christmas tour, and we released a new Christmas album, and now we've got a new uh, uh, The Drunken Sailor is coming out, I believe, March 1st or 2nd, with um, a bunch of nautical, naughty songs of the sea. So we've been keeping busy, and as my mother used to say, there's no rest for the wicked. This uh, Drunken Sailor, it's uh, said that you guys got over 6 million hits on YouTube with this song. Yeah, it was the strangest thing. Uh, somebody had phoned me just a year ago and said, you know, somebody said they're playing your um, your drunken sailor and it's, there's like a million hits. And I said, oh, you know, it's probably the Rankin family or Flogging Molly. It's probably not us. I mean, that's an old traditional song. And they said, no, no, it's you guys. And so I finally got my grandson to take me to the web to show me how to work it. And sure enough, it's us. And it's now up to like six million hits. And so that gives us the idea of putting out this CD called The Drunken Sailor. We, we've always, since the band began 46 years ago, we've always ended the show with The Drunken Sailor. It's a good audience participation. You get half the audience yelling, way, hey, and the other yells, up, shirizen. So it's a really hmm. good participation ending song. So um, we thought we'd make a CD around it, which we did. So we wrote some sailor songs and we collected some. And um, so there you are. That's how all that came about. And also with the 6 million views, it's guaranteed that it's going to be bring in some new fans around this time. No, I, it, it will. Uh, that's why I thought it was probably a much younger band that had recorded it, like Flock and Molly, like I said, or somebody like that. But uh, that's why I was quite surprised that it was us that was doing it, and the young people seemed to like it. So it's, um, I suppose it shows you that music has no bounds, really. If it's, if it's a decent song and everybody enjoys it, uh, why not? I mean, it doesn't have to be rap, or it doesn't have to be rock and roll, or country. It can be, it can be Celtic. So there you are. And like this too, the the people of today could maybe go out and buy a record of the Irish Rovers, an actual vinyl from the past too. Yes, yes, they still could. And there's actually, as I, when I say sometimes, yes, we had a 45 called the Unicorn. They think I'm talking about a gun. <laughs> and I'm saying, no, no, it was a two-sided record that you used to, that's what you used to buy for about three dollars. You could buy just two of the songs. So. I've gone through a lot of changes in, in my lifetime. Um, 50, uh, 50 years ago, I mean, Buddy Holly used to have to use a, a tin can on a wire to string it up his house into the barn, and that's how they got Echo. So, I mean, if you were to bring a Buddy Holly into what you can do today in a home studio, it's absolutely amazing, as you know. it's um, Anybody nowadays could really make a CD. You, you still need a really good microphone, and you still need... Um, you know, you still need to have a bit of talent, but seriously, you can really, because of computers, you can make a CD anywhere, anytime. It's quite amazing. Now, let's let's say you go back into your past with a song like Wasn't That a Party that was a huge, huge single at the time, number one, I do believe, yes. and uh, yes. recording yes. today compared to then. How How's it different in your eyes? Well, it, it's different in the fact that when we did the party, we did it in um, Pinewood Studios in Vancouver, and they were the top studio of the day, and we all got there, and we all recorded it together. In um, The party itself took about two days to record properly. Well, nowadays, the big difference is I start all of the CDs here in where I live on Vancouver Island. So I start them here, and then I take them back to Ireland, and we finish them in Ireland. So even 10 or 12 years ago, you would have had trouble doing that. The, it wouldn't have sounded proper, but because of digital recording, it, it doesn't matter anymore. So you can, I can, like I say, I can start them here with my guitar, bass, and just a drum machine, take them back to Ireland and put on Wilson, who lives there, the accordion player, and our banjo player lives in Cork. So I put them on, and then I bring them back to Vancouver Island again, where I put on proper vocals and my proper guitar work, and then all gels together. And you probably couldn't have done that 10 years ago and kept the continuity, but it sounded funny, like the different recording studios would have sounded different, but with the new recording techniques, everything sounds the same, and it's, uh, 
sometimes it's not a good thing, but um, it works in our favor. Um, I, I've, al- I've often thought that I still, I'm quite a collector of, um, of albums, and I have a very good German turntable that I went out and bought, and there's still a, there's a warmth missing from the new digital recording that these albums had a bit of a warmth Mm. And I quite like that sound. Like when I listen to the Beatles, I've got their, um, I've got albums. I got all their albums, of course, because that was my era. And I've also got them all now on um, on CD. And there is a difference. There's a much better warmth coming off the albums that I personally like. It's so uh, it's just because I'm old. It's also too that maybe that the people today have it all on MP3 too. That you know it starts to compress the sound a lot. Well, it does compress. Uh, yes, MP3s and all of those. There, we we had compression in our day too, but you can compress too much, and that's sort of what happens when when you take, um, let's say, you use 25 or 30 tracks on one song. Well, eventually, no matter what the recording technique is, those have to come down to two stereo tracks. So you've got to record everything mix it and bring it down to two tracks. Well, if you start compressing it after that again, which which those MPEG things are as our downloads, it even sounds, um, I don't know, it sounds like it's in a tin can sometimes. It just doesn't have the same great sound that you hear in the studio. So yeah, as good as the techniques are today, you still have to have a good ear. You have to be careful that you don't compress it too much that you don't put too much echo on it that all of the things that were rules 20 years ago still are rules today you still have to end up with that final product product on two uh, stereo tracks for sure and then it's going to be mastered correctly without you know too much and, and that's the other yes that's the other problem when um, i'm just waiting for the master to be returned to me from the drunken sailor our new cd it's in Toronto right now, so they're, they've taken my master and they've mastered their own to, to produce it, but they'll send that back to me and I'll listen to it one more time to make sure that they didn't do any little glitches or any little dips or rolls, so it can still happen, even with the best equipment. So um, it, it's a long process. It's, um, I can understand now when I watch a, a film and when I see a, a new movie, I see... 400 people working on it and it takes a year to make well mm. i can understand that after doing a dvd and after doing our, our cds it, it is a long process if you want to get it correct and another thing we're seeing is tour dates coming up for the irish rovers you guys uh, never stop no we just we did all of the maritimes there we didn't get to um to newfoundland we're going to try and get there in the summer but we we did our christmas tour all through the maritimes and and that was great. And now our, um, our we call it our March Madness St. Patrick's Day tour that starts in Florida and goes all over the East Coast and ends up in Boston. And, and then as soon as that tour is over, then I fly to Ireland to uh, complete the sound that we started on the new Christmas DVD. So we're going to finish that up in Ireland after the tour. So um, like I said, there's no rest, but that's okay. It's... <laughs> Life is short, but you still, you know, if, if you enjoy what you're doing, whether you're a writer like yourself or whether you're an entertainer, if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do a good job. So you have to enjoy what we're doing. And part of the Irish Rovers charm, people ask me, why are you still going after 45, 46 years? And I said, well, two things. First of all, the people still want to hear us, which is, of course, that's the bottom line. If the people right. don't want to hear you, you're not going to be performing. So the people still want to hear us. And we enjoy each other and we thoroughly enjoy the music. So if you don't enjoy what you're doing, it's it's all moot. It's, it's a moot point. You just, um, you have to enjoy what you're doing. In, in entertainment, if you're not enjoying yourself on stage, the people know, they sense it, and they're going to stop coming and see it. One of my biggest complaints was, um, one of my favorite early bands was the Eagles. I loved the Eagles. I thought their harmonies were great and I loved all their playing. Well, on this last tour, it's they're sitting on stage. They're not even making eye contact, and I'm hearing from from promoters that they don't even stay in the same hotels because they can't stand each other. Hmm. Now, to me, that is not show business. That's just um, that's just scrambling to make a dollar, and I don't agree with that at all. I just um, you can see it in their playing. They don't they don't even look at each other when they're playing. And that's too bad when you look at a band like the it Eagles. Is, it is too bad. Well, well, you know, everybody as a young entertainer, you start out 
because you want to entertain and all you want to do is be able to get on the stage and see if you can entertain the people and when you and it turns out that you can entertain them it's the best feeling in the world it's a wonderful feeling to be able to make people happy and you know we're blessed the fact that i can do this and they actually pay me for it too it's, it's <laughs> a wonderful uh, it's a wonderful thing uh, George, one final thing here. Let's say when you look at the whole discography you guys did, how do you pick out a set list to do in an evening well, or on a tour? Well, it's a hard thing to do. I, I'll, in this case, uh, Jason, I'll go with a lot of the new CD, uh, a lot of the Sailor songs. So it's going to be more of a nautical theme. I've also written a song on it called The Titanic. This is the 100th anniversary of The Titanic when it sank. Um, so I'm, we have a song for the Titanic, so we'll we'll do that. And we always have to do, wasn't that a party? And the people even ask for Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. And I say, no, that's strictly a Christmas song. We're not going to sing it in July. But So we'll do the Orange and the Green. We'll do the Black Velvet Band. Like I say, the Unicorn has to be done. So there's about half a dozen songs that will always be in the set. That's what people pay to, to hear us sing, so that's what we do. And then around those five or six main songs, I'll build the set from our last couple of CDs and what I think the audience will like. They love some of the older songs, some of the ballads. They always go over well. So you just have to sort of play it by ear, and hopefully you're picking the right songs. But there's always going to be somebody that says, oh, you didn't sing that my favorite song, and you didn't do Lily the Pink. And I say, oh, my God, we forgot about that so you, you can't win. You mm. can't always win, but you can get close. And that's all we can do is um, try and get close. Well, George Millar, it's uh, been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, Well, thank th- you for your time. I really appreciate that too as well. And you uh, keep up the good work and uh, look forward to thank seeing you. this release. Okay, well, thank you so much and all the best to you as well. And thanks for your time. All right, George, you have a good one. Okay, 